This episode is brought to you by Lurk Royalty, a Twitch gaming team that puts out Call of Duty content, Rocket League content, and any epic esports matchups you can think of. If you want to check them out, go over to uh, twitch.tv. The three team members are Creeper KC, you got Brazi TTV, and Reckless underscore X. Go check them out over on twitch.tv. And now, the Delirious Dance Gaming Podcast. With your hosts, Clinton, Hunter, and Ryan. As we bring you the latest in gaming news, reviews, and the newest updates on national and local esports events. Along with great recipes for you good looking dads, gadgets and gifts for gaming, gags, and great deals. And we're raising the heat as we go into gaming competition in the Delirious Dome. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, good night, buenas noches, buenas dias. It's another episode of the Delirious Dads Gaming Podcast, and this is episode 121. Hang on to your wallets. I can't believe I accidentally guessed 120 at the last one. Like, that was the most random guess <laughs> for no reason that I guess 120. You're like, yeah, I think it is. And I was like, huh? huh? Super weird. Hmm? Man. Hunter, yeah, we're here. We're here. Yes, has not moved yet. Although no, the background, the background is looking uh, thin back there, in the old background. I'm noticing. It that. looks. It looks kind of moved. How much you want to bet that computer is like the last thing he takes out of the house? It's like one of the last items to be packed and shipped away. Are you talking It'll about the me? last one to be packed? But it won't be the last one out. Uh, I know, Hunter. That PC and that PlayStation Five is going to be the last things. Taken out of that home. Yep. See? Actually, the PC will be packed with me, but it won't, it won't go in the pod for sure, because I don't trust that. Yeah, I wouldn't trust and that then either, bro. the PlayStation 5, I'm going to just keep it a backpack on me, because I'm going to take it to my parents' house and stuff. There you go. Just game out. So before the, before the show we were discussing, guys, has nothing to do with the show, but we're going to throw it out there. Uh, fat men, but this jumped off of Chris Farley. Fat men that look good, and Clint was like, "I don't even think Chris Farley looked good." And I was like, "I don't know that any fat guy looks good, not fat like that." You know, like there's a mm-hmm. there's a fat like Clint, which is more like a medium. Yeah, there's guys like that that look good, not Clint, obviously, but there are people his size that look good. Uh, my size, very rare, and if you go above me, not happening. It's, it's over. Yeah, it just doesn't happen. What Can about? I... I got one for you. Hold on, Clint. Wait, I, I have to put a stipulation up... on it though. Hunter brought up Gordon, James Gordon, the the, yeah, that's who it is, James the Gordon. host of uh, the English Night Show or whatever it's called. I think Hunter is mistaken with the with the thought that I could. You look at a guy and you could say you can look at him and say that guy probably looks good skinny, and you can kind of mm-hmm. see that in him. That does not mean he looks good now. And so when I look at him, I go, no, he's still super ugly. Or you do like the cute factor, like a little baby, right? They got the little chubby cheeks. Oh yeah, you could have a teddy bear yeah. thing going. Yeah. yeah. What about Kevin James? He's a good-looking big guy. Kevin James? Yeah. Paul Bart? Yeah. No. no. He looks yeah, he like... Is. No, he he's not. He no, he's not. not. No. He's not good at all. You can look at him and go, if he lost weight, he would look good probably. No, he's not a, you guys are not so shallow. Naturally no. ugly guy. No, he just doesn't... He's just not a good And here's guy. the thing. You guys, I think you guys are confusing like super sexy. No, no We're not listen, talking about I, super sexy. We're no, just talking I'm, about good looking. No, because here's the thing: he only looks good no homo. Wait, with like a, with like a beard. With no homo. If he has a beard, he looks okay. But that's pretty much every fat guy. If you have a beard, you look good. You look that's better. our makeup. But yeah. but, it, but it shapes. But the thing is, just like me right now, it shapes when you have a beard. It shapes the the roundness of the cheeks a little more, right? Are you saying my beard? Is, my face looks skinnier in here. Yes. Yes, because it, cause it evens up the, the, yeah. the big head part, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's not skinnier, it's less fat. The jowls. It's, yeah, just <laughs> exactly. You can't yeah. see the details. Right. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. Guys, I mean, where, let, us know, where, let us know in the comments what do you think. We are shallow, and we can't be attracted to bigger men, as gay as that sounds. Uh, I've just always given respect where respect is due for it. Like, I, like you can ask Natalie if I see... Um, 
a, a man that is very handsome. I, I can recognize that. Oh, I well, recognize so that. But we're talking about non-fat guys. Yeah, I'm not the guy I've, who can't I've go. I've done told you. I bat, 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 guys that are I bat for still. the other field if it was Chris Hemingsworth, you know? Jeez. I could go there. <laughs> yeah, you guys are shallow. What? what? How are we shallow? Because I would definitely date Why you Kevin say, James. Geez, I think, I think, oh, uh, oh nobody, nobody's talking put- about whether he would be a fun guy to be around, right? That's not what we're talking about here in this ultra non I think he's a handsome guy. We're, I know, but we're, I'm saying that he's not as handsome as handsome skinny guys. There's a big difference. Yeah. You can be a, you can be good looking, but you have to end that with for a big guy. If you, you have guys, to say for no. a big guy. Yeah. Okay. Shallow. Okay. No. Think of this: We're watching The Walking Dead from season one, right? Mm-hmm. Rick Grimes weighs three hundred pounds instead of like a good one sixty. Probably where he's at. Where he's at in the show, right? Think of that main character now. Is he as cool? Is he as sexy? Is he as all those things? Uh, no. He would have died. No. He, 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 he would have died. I'm just saying, it brings the bar down. Even zombie, you're, even you're, zombie man. When you're heavy like that, you're the comedy effect. You're, you're completely shallow for that to automatically bring the guy down. And I'm saying, hey, that's the way it is. Uh, it's not It's not shallow. I think that's a, a fact. I think our nature mm-hmm. looks at people who are less healthy and we are less attracted to them. Mm-hmm. There's, a like reason, saying, there's a reason like, Rick Grimes was Rick Grimes and Eugene was Eugene. That's right. And it's... <laughs> And it's like saying, it's like saying a peacock is shallow because it likes the one with the bigger, brighter feathers. That's how the peacock's wired, baby. I mean, that's the the reason they have now, that. Now there are outliers. There's people that love the the big bone, you know. Yeah, they like them curves, and that's fine. I think we should move on because I think me and you guys are on a different page here. Oh, I'm sure we are because apparently you love all, so that's fine. It's right. what do you mean? I, I'm just, you're just more I'm like just more less... accepting of some people, right. apparently. Yeah, different sizes, shapes. Oh, hold on. See, Hunter's trying to throw us under the bus again. I'm perfectly accepting. I'm a big guy myself. I have plenty of big guy friends. I, I'm not also accepting and saying, yeah, you're attractive. I'm being honest. I'm saying, you're a great guy. You don't look very good because you're fat. Like, those are two separate <laughs> things. Just saying. He tells me this all the time, guys, so. I don't know. Yeah, Clint, for, he's a perfect example. It's a, it's a conundrum. Clint, look, Clint looked way better when he wasn't fat. Just like me, I looked way better when I wasn't fat. Simple fact. Maybe maybe it's more of we're mad at ourselves, so we're projecting it onto other heavy set people. Maybe. Could be that. Yeah. I don't know. Even when I was fit, I didn't think fat people looked better. You know what I mean? <laughs> so I just took him up to the whole other level of uh, shallowness. I love it. <laughs> just to be honest. That's all. Hey, but moving on to from shallowness to things going on in the world. So tonight, guys, we're we're changing up just a little bit. We are going to do some leaks for geeks. We're going to talk say. about something where it doesn't matter how fat you are. That's, that's what we're right. talking about. That's the little that's leak true. I'm going to give you. That's true. Yeah. So we're going to go into that. That's going to be the big. Be. That's going to be the big subject of the night. But I do want to make some announcements real quick of things I've seen. One of the big ones is. Grand Theft Auto San Andreas is coming to VR. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Didn't know that. Yeah, so I don't know how that's going to look or how that's going to play out. How would that even play? That's what I'm thinking. Yeah. Really odd. Hmm. Open Um, world VR games make me sick, man. Well, Like, literally, they make me me motion sick. We've we've all been there. But I told you, I told you, you got to build up that VR sickness level. Well, that's what we were talking about. Want, maybe. But I got really bad motion sickness, dude. Guys, we've been talking about maybe doing a, um, getting a Quest 2 at Christmas time when it comes. Mm-hmm. And I've been th- sitting here thinking, like, why is Clint even asking Hunter? He's been so honest and upfront with the fact that he can't do VR. He ain't going to spend I would money. try it. There's dude. some games that I'd probably be able to play with you guys. Like, What you need to get is some Dremamine and see what it's all about. You still haven't tried it. That's true. Is it just over the counter? Yeah. 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 Take a little bit. They'll help with the motion sickness. At least I know, like, though, I've gotten good at knowing when I need to stop. Yeah. Yeah, you just when feel my, for the sweat. No, yeah, the when my <laughs> palms start getting sweaty, I have to take a break. Yeah. Yep. I had a little bit of, uh, you know, diarrhea earlier, so I tried out the old VR. I found that the things that make me sick are the ones where you actually have to, like, run in-game. Like, Skyrim yeah. made me really motion sick. Wait, wait, wait. You're saying playing VR made you get the squirts? 
Oh, yeah. Gets the stomach yep. kind of churning a little bit. Uh, that doesn't moving. happen to me. It just makes kind me nauseous. Rolling. It's all get up. No, hmm. any, sometimes when I like push real hard into VR, it's like the stomach gets the churning. Next thing I know, oh, I'm that feeling diarrhea like, a little bit. Seems unhealthy. Well, that's that doesn't seem it. like that would be VR. Maybe, but, that's, I'm, but um, I'm that guy though. I play it for a long time, then I come off, and I'm you just don't like, oh. you you sure you don't have anything else in that can give you the squirts? I mean, like celiac, celiac disease. Yeah, that combined with VR could be a bad combo. I didn't know like motion blur could give you the squirts. That's that's all. Well, no, thing. it didn't start out as that. It's more like that. Get the dry mouth, and then the stomach starts kind of rolling and turning, and then next thing you know, it's like, hey, it's time to go. Uh, Got exactly. some gas and let some. But, but what we're talking out. about, when someone's on a ship and get seasick. We heard about them throwing up and feeling stomach sick. I've never heard about them getting diarrhea. That's what oh, runs okay. from <laughs> motion sickness. Yeah, I don't know if it works well, that way. I've never had to throw it may up. Make so you feel like you're in the bathroom. So you just throw up at the end. It's just how it works for you. Maybe. I don't know. I have felt nauseous though before if I pushed it too hard. I've been like nauseous on and off all day, dude. I hate it. It's like my worst. I hate like I'll take anything else. Well, Hunter's gonna hate tonight's episode then because Great. he's probably gonna get a little bit nauseous just thinking about. And I, you know, I stayed home today so I could rest. My boss is very gracious to me. I uh-huh. couldn't even stay at home. I had to get in the car with my wife and our dogs and go sit in a parking lot because our house was being uh, what is it called, inspected. Mm. Mm. I would have said, hey, guys, move around me. Yeah, I wish. They can, they can inspect your house with you in the so room. We were in the start. We dropped right off his, his nanny. He stayed with her for a couple hours, and then we went to Starbucks, and now they got out and got a coffee, and we just sat in the car, leaned the chair back, lay there in the car for there in misery. a couple hours. It sucks. That does yeah. suck. It happens, though. It does. All right, guys, we had an excellent Halloween party, by the way. We had a blast. Mm-hmm. We did. We posted some pictures. We did. We, did. we had a blast. It was a good we time. All right, let's uh, let's move on over to the leaks <laughs> for the geeks. All right, guys, it's time for the leaks for the geeks, the news for the dudes. And uh, by leaks for geeks, tonight we're talking about Facebook. Would you guys cut it out and just get <laughs> into the conversation? Clint can't take it. <laughs> I can't. I can't yeah, t- because you're leaving me in about, silence. We're talking about all kinds of good things. I'm excited about tonight. I think we it's- are. It's a little bit outside of the realm of just gaming, but gaming is, is going to be a big, outside of the realm of what gaming used to be, right? It's yeah. constantly changing. So, and I think gaming is going to be a big driving factor. This is kind of like, oh yeah, they're pushing. It, it already has. Gaming is the only thing that's pushed the technology to where it's at. Yeah, nobody yeah. cares about anything but gaming in that sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So tonight, guys, uh, to change it up, if you're not into this, then this episode may not be for you. But we're going to check out a highlight video that CNET released. Um, it's Microsoft versus Facebook, or if you were paying attention to the news, they're now meta platforms. So, uh, we're going to watch a video on that. It's a highlight deal of Zuckerberg and Microsoft's, uh, head guy giving their reveals for this metaverse. So they're, hold on. They're, they're now the mother company. It's not Facebook. It's meta platforms. Well, that's what they're, that's what they're going to be called on the stock exchange. Uh, right now, if you look up the symbol, it's still FB, but the company itself is becoming Meta. Yeah, meta, so then that'll be the mother. Platforms. That'll be the mother over Snapchat, Instagram, mm-hmm. all the stuff they have their fingers in. Mm-hmm. Is that going to okay. be a totally different stock, or is it going to be Facebook stock just renamed? Uh, Facebook it, stock yeah. renamed. Yeah. Okay, I was going to say we should buy in way it's while well, it's down. Yeah, while mm-hmm. it's down. Boy, but I wish. Not going to be down. It's just gonna... Nope, it's just going to be. I think it's like three sixty-two or something like that right now. So I'm like, well, I can buy three, you can buy me three shares and call it good. Right? Don't get me started, but if you're going to buy something, buy some BSV. 
Go on. Yes, we. I've heard good things about Ethereum too with this metaverse stuff going. I don't know if I told you guys, but you know the whole thing with Doge, I ended up losing some money. Oh, did you oh, really? like some? Well, like a good amount, like probably like four hundred dollars. Oh, I and thought then... you. I thought you backed out. Yeah, I thought you did too. I did, but I'd already lost the money, right? Uh, oh, so then I bought in. My friend told me to buy him to AMC. Yeah, I remember. I made my money back plus hundreds. Oh yeah, okay. So yeah, that's good. It was still a fun venture. I'm yeah, still I'm still broke even with Doge right now. Um, well, almost broke even. If if it just well, you guys just a little bit more, I could cash out. Ago, yeah, you guys bought in a long time ago before I did, so you got to still have some money made on. Yeah, well, I already yeah. sold out back when I needed it. So <laughs> yeah. All right, so we're talking about the metaverse. We're going to check out this video. This may or may not be included in the uh, the final product. It just depends on how much uh, how interesting we think it is to put on the on the platform. Okay, you guys ready for what this? What is the metaverse? What is the metaverse? You're about to find out. Yep. And finally, as the digital and physical worlds come together, we are creating an entirely new platform layer which is the metaverse. We're bringing people, places, and things together with the digital world in both the consumer space as well as in the enterprise. Take, for example, Dynamics 365 Connected Spaces, which we are announcing this morning. Connected Spaces provides a new perspective on the way people move and interact in physical spaces, whether it's a retail store or a factory, or even how organizations manage health and safety in a hybrid work environment. You can do analytics, you can get real-time insights, you can run simulations, you can automate routine tasks. And when we talk about the metaverse, we're describing both a new platform and a new application type, similar to how we talked about the web and websites in the early 90s. Imagine you put on your glasses or headset and you're instantly in your home space. It has parts of your physical home recreated virtually. It has things that are only possible virtually. And it has an incredibly inspiring view of whatever you find most beautiful. Hey, are you coming? Yeah, just got to find something to wear. The hair on the avatar looks Perfect. better. <laughs> Zuckerberg, dude, it's just so different, man. Oh, hey, Mark. Hey, what's going on? Hey, Hi. Mark. What's up, Mark? Whoa, we're floating in space? Uh -huh. Who made this place? It's <laughs> awesome. Right? It's from a crater. I met in L.A. Uh, this place is amazing. <laughs> Boz, is that you? Of course it's me. You know I had to be the robot, man. <laughs> I thought I was supposed to be the robot. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> oh, you're I a lizard. I knew you were bluffing. <laughs> hey, wait. Where is Naomi? Let's yes. call her. Naomi. <laughs> hey, should we deal you in? Sorry, I'm running late, but you've got to see what we're checking out. There's an artist going around Soho hiding AR pieces for people to find. 3D street art. That's cool. Across the Microsoft Cloud, from Azure IoT to Azure Digital Twins to Connected Spaces and Microsoft Mesh, we're building the metaverse intrinsics, the metaverse platform for you to build upon. In a sense, the metaverse enables us to embed computing into the real world and to embed the real world into computing, bringing real presence to any digital space. For years, we've talked about creating this digital representation of the world. But now we actually have the opportunity to go into that world and participate in it. What's most important is that we are able to bring our humanity with us and choose how we want to experience this world and who we want to interact with. I can't overstate how much of a breakthrough this is. It's no longer just looking at a camera view of a factory floor. You can be on the floor. It's no longer just video conferencing with colleagues. You can be with them in the same room. It's no longer just playing a game with friends. You can be in the game with them. The feeling of presence. This is the defining quality of the metaverse. You're going to really feel like you're there with other people. You'll see their facial expressions, you'll see their body language, maybe figure out if they're actually holding a winning hand. 
all the subtle ways that we communicate that today's technology can't quite deliver. Next, there are avatars, and that's how we're going to represent ourselves in the metaverse. Avatars will be as common as profile pictures today, but instead of a static image, they're going to be living 3D representations of you. Your expressions, your gestures, that are going to make interactions much richer than anything that's possible online today. You'll probably have a photorealistic avatar for work, a stylized one for hanging out, and maybe even a fantasy one for gaming. You're going to have a wardrobe of virtual clothes for different occasions, designed by different creators and from different apps and experiences. Importantly, you, know, you should be able to bring your avatar and digital items across different apps and experiences in the metaverse. Features like grid views, together mode, and presenter mode in Teams mark the beginning of bringing 2D immersive experiences to collaboration. But human presence is the ultimate connection. When you and I can have a meeting where we are all present together without actually being physically present, that's the next big breakthrough. And we are approaching this thoughtfully because we have learned from similar transitions in the past. Mesh for Microsoft Teams will allow you to connect with presence and have a shared immersive experience directly in Teams. Let me now turn it over to Ellen Shook and Jason Warnke from Accenture to share how they plan to reimagine work with it. Thanks, Satya, and hi, everyone. It's great to be here. Thanks for having us, and welcome to Accenture's end floor. At Accenture, we have over 624,000 people serving clients in 120 countries. And critical to our ability to work seamlessly together is Microsoft Teams. We have turned our focus away from spaces and places to creating what we call omni-connected experiences, where our people can participate, contribute, and feel like they belong regardless of where they're working. So it's been awesome to see Mesh for Microsoft Teams come together to enable those experiences. And as Satya said, it's so important to bring the human connection into our digital world. We're using this technology for meetings and learning, team get-togethers, and it's helped us really transform our new joiner experience. And you'll see I've joined this meeting today using my avatar. We love this new feature because it gives everyone the flexibility and choice to show up in ways they are most comfortable. And for me, not having to be on camera all day has really helped with my energy and engagement. And even though you're not joining on camera, it feels natural as I can see your facial expressions, gestures, and even live reactions. We've also created an incredible immersive space that's now seamlessly accessible directly through Teams. Why don't we go check it out? Here we are, Jason, and your avatar looks awesome. Something that I really like is how freely oh, you can move around legs. and have face-to-face mm -hmm. -face conversations. Yeah, that's exactly right. Mm -hmm. We've held more than 100 team gatherings in these immersive spaces where people but can that's how this really works, though, that's freaking because they're truly in the really same good. place together. The solution is yeah, we can for, like a meeting, yeah, for like a meeting deal, you do a podcast like this. <laughs> And like There's many avatars, organizations, onboarding has been remote for the past 18 months. So bringing our new hires into this immersive environment fosters immediate and deeper connections. It transcends physical boundaries and helps individuals experience a culture in a very personal way. Messy Ryan being able to like meet with people and show them like a house, their professional network digital much house, faster. you know, with his little avatar. In IT, we're thrilled <laughs> how easily we could unlock Mesh's capabilities through Teams. In fact, we're currently rolling it out on all of our computers and recently deployed 60,000 VR headsets. The integration with Microsoft 365 makes everything feel familiar. But on top of that, spatial audio makes everything sound just like it would in person. And I love seeing and hearing our colleagues collaborating and whiteboarding and using this space for productivity. This doesn't just feel real, it is real. It's been exciting to see an idea become a reality in such a short time enabling presence and connection that transcends location, keeps our culture vibrant wherever we're working, and levels the playing field to create equal and inclusive experiences. Thank you all for taking a quick tour with us. And with that, back to you, Satya. Thanks so much. 
Let me sit there working with somebody for like a year, realize they don't look anything like they actually are. Yeah. <laughs> right. Has been able to recreate the human connection you feel around. Like I didn't see anybody fat in any of those avatars. Oh, bird. And even I'm being serious. Right. And sessions that you would At Microsoft, you know, there's plenty of fat people. <laughs> and of course, these experiences are just incredible when experienced on any VR or AR headsets from Oculus to HoloLens. All of a sudden you meet somebody and he's black. You thought he was white the whole time. The Super weird. And while this may sound like science fiction, we're starting to see a lot of these technologies coming together. In the next five or ten years, a lot of this is going to be mainstream. And a lot of us will be creating and inhabiting worlds that are just as detailed and the convincing over as this mm -hmm. one on a daily basis. So even though it's still a long way off, we're starting to work on some of these foundational concepts today. Horizon is the social platform that we're building for people to create and interact in the metaverse. One part of this is Horizon Home which is our early vision for a home space in the metaverse. Horizon Home is the first thing that you'll see when you put on your Quest headset. Today, there are already a bunch of options to choose from, and in the future, anyone will be able to create one. We've just called it Home until now because it's been missing something very important, people. Soon, we're going to be introducing a social version of Home, where you can invite your friends to join you as avatars. You'll be able to hang out, watch videos together, and jump into apps together. Then there is Horizon Worlds, which is where you can build worlds and jump into them with people. Horizon wow. is designed to make it like possible for everyone to create. And we're already seeing people build some really interesting experiences, from creating new games together, well, to throwing surprise to parties in VR that family and friends around the world can join. We started rolling out Horizon Worlds in beta last year and we're adding more people and more worlds every day. And we also just launched Horizon Workrooms earlier this year for collaboration. Beyond Horizon, we're also making it easier to communicate with your friends across different layers of reality. This year, we're bringing messenger calls to virtual reality. You're gonna be able to invite your friends to a messenger call and soon you'll be able to explore somewhere together or join a game. Now, these are the kinds of tools that need to get built so that you can jump into the metaverse with your friends from anywhere. And they're going to unlock some pretty amazing experiences. All right. What did you guys think? I think it looked exciting. Yeah. I definitely think it's... I don't think it's a maybe. You know what I mean? I do think that that's something that's coming. I messed it up And it's the next stage of VR. Right. And that's where that's where a lot of people thought, ah, VR is going to die out. And I've always felt like, no. VR gaming may kind of have a stall, but VR has such VR and augmented reality. When you do both, really, mm -hmm. it's such a it has such a broad stroke of influence. You know what I mean? That it can yeah. have that. There's no way it's going anywhere. Yeah, it's too every, unique. Every, everything else just has to catch up to it, and that's yep. what's happening. Mm -hmm. Um, and I did notice on that video. Um, if you guys go, it's all you have to do is just I I typed in on YouTube, Facebook, Meta metaverse mm -hmm. reveal or something like that anyway it was on the cnet you can search up the video it's a versus video but i did notice there the two comparisons microsoft for sure is going hard for the workplace which surprised right. me right because you think in my head i think oh they want to capture personal spaces well no not necessarily so i mean that's going to be i'm wondering if those two are going to end up teaming up because really you have microsoft who's really hitting the, the workspaces hard and then you got facebook or meta trying to go more for the personal slash gaming Social. experience, right? Social experience. Yeah. Yep. Right. Right. Facebook wants to know what the inside of your house looks like. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Oh, they're going to know too. Yeah. They're going to know where you're <laughs> at all the time, what room you're in. Yep. Yeah. They already do. All I can think but, about when he's talking about wardrobes and stuff, I was like, all those microtransactions. Yep. Be a bunch of stuff oh, you yeah. have to buy. Tons of money. Yeah. There'll be free, free. There'll be free enterprise though. So mm -hmm. that's one of the big things about it is it's not going to be all Facebook selling it. It's going to be a free enterprise, like a whole other world, just like the internet. Mm -hmm. So each p people will have their own digital stores, and and there'll be a there'll be a, in a sense, meta capitalism. You know what I mean? The and the cool. the idea would be, hey, I just got my Halloween skin of Roadhog and Overwatch. I love right. that skin. 
Now I've made that my avatar. And so now right. I can go over to this club that's going on and I can wear my Roadhog Halloween skin. Right, but what it it's isn't, not, what I'm saying is what it isn't is Fortnite and skins where everything you're buying is Fortnite only. Yeah, 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 this is not that. This is more like Facebook and I would say even Microsoft, the way they talked about it, they're kind of trying to reinvent a new um, canvas, right? Like the internet is a canvas to paint on and to mm -hmm. work and to do business and to play and to do everything on. This is a new canvas that combines the real world and the digital world like the internet did. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's somewhere between our world and the internet and right. it's going to start a new canvas. So it'll start, you'll, you'll have advertising agencies. You'll have everything you can think of will exist within this kind of third. It'll all be transferable dimension. though. Yeah. It's like, Oh, I made a bunch of money today in the metaverse playing yeah. at this metaverse casino. And right. I want to transfer those funds cash yeah. out so i can go take my wife out for dinner tonight well just like the and internet, we, and we can do buy... an augmented reality uh, treasure hunt right it's just operation. like when i i sold something on the internet on amazon that's still real money so there's still going to be that the thing that's going to connect it all is the real people and the real money mm -hmm. but everything within it is going to be its own new platform you know digital to do whatever the freak you want with probably i mean yeah. you can only imagine in every industry including the adult industry, that's going to be huge, right? I mean, if you think about that, mm -hmm. adult, the adult people don't talk about it much, but the adult industry fuels technology more than almost any other industry. Mm -hmm. And so they're not, Facebook's not going to talk about it and Microsoft's not going to talk about it, but they both know there's a lot of money to be made in that. Mm -hmm. There's going to be a lot of money to be made in, in obviously uh, clothing, art, decor, things that have no real purpose, right? Mm -hmm. That's why and Second that's Life, stuff. the adult, locations in the world of second life is the most money making yep. busiest areas of the entire world of second life that yep. they have that would be the the closest to a metaverse that i've seen anyone try to create right mm -hmm. but even like you were saying it's still kind of a website based deal because you go to the url and you're there in the world but right but what's <laughs> i guess what's different is when you're in the internet you're buying things from the digital for the physical most of the time Mm -hmm. right you yeah, may buy a video game around. but you're usually buying things for the physical i'm buying a shirt i may i may order a car nowadays right mm -hmm. or whatever i might get i'm finding and purchasing over the internet the thing with this metaverse is yes can you use it for buying digitally physical things yes but the big thing that's going to be different is that whole nft aspect which is you're buying real non-replicable items digital items that will always be digital like you may buy you a ferrari in the digital world and maybe that ferrari is really rare and so it's five grand real dollars mm -hmm. because in in this weird metaverse you're going to drive a ferrari of course that ferrari will never need maintenance it'll never you know what i mean mm -hmm. none of these kind of things so but you're not really driving it either and that but, that stuff is because it's id'd right that's how it's going to have a verification process so that it's not a well, that version of that Corvette. Yeah, well, you can't. Whatever. Yeah, so that's what a non fungible token is. Is essentially a super high end version of a VIN number or anything that's what we would consider trackable social security number. Right? It's a digital fingerprint. Now, here's a question because we get into some of that stuff and just looking at how to get like a crypto coin. Right? Mm -hmm. Is super just. There it seems like there's a lot to some of it. Right. Mm -hmm. Um. In the metaverse, like when I'm thinking about how the metaverse will work, it has to be presented in a way that's easier than that, though, right? Oh, yeah. To get, to yeah. get the general public to jump in and become part yeah, there, of the metaverse. Yeah, I think there'll be a bunch of both. There'll be like the easy things, like just like it's really easy to get on Robinhood and buy Bitcoin, mm -hmm. right? Like that's super easy. And then there's going to be those underground type things that are take a lot of work and you got to kind of grind to figure out and get it together. And then it's kind of glitchy. Right. Yeah. I mean, that's, yeah. that's how it's going to be. There's going to be both. Now, Hunter, I know you're, you've been a little more quiet. Um, and I know some of this is probably a little bit newer just to look at because we kind of had talked about Mirang and kind of talked about it earlier last weekend. Um, I don't know. We can throw out like a fantasy game here. We'll just kind of say, what do we want to see? What do we think is going to happen? But mm -hmm. Hunter, what, what's, what's your th thoughts first off? I think it's uh, a really cool idea. I, for me personally, I like the, 
um, I see a lot of the thinking behind like the the office side of it because I mean COVID probably spurred them into that faster mm-hmm. than they'd ever thought. Mm-hmm. Um, now you can have staff meetings and conference meetings and stuff without having to be in the same room as somebody. So mm-hmm. I get that. That's pretty cool. Um, but for me, the cool part is like thinking about me going, you know, now I'm going to, when I move, I'm going to be 15 hours away from you guys. But if we could come into a, you know, into a party like that in somebody's house and just chill and watch stuff and, mm-hmm. and play games right there in the room, you know, mm-hmm. just cool stuff <laughs> like that. That'll be so cool. Like, yeah. you know, it's, it, it's it'll weird feel... to think about, right? But it, it would and be. And then my mind uh... also went to like, it, it would be hard to get my parents to that spot, but like getting my parents something so that they could, you know, mm-hmm in there with us and well and right now there's not really a presence with it right right so and it's starting like certain games you do notice a presence but Mm -hmm. there's not really a social presence aspect and so we think well yeah i mean there is a big difference between a video call Mm -hmm. right and a phone call right you don't feel like you're there but you do feel like you're getting those facial expressions Mm -hmm. you're connecting more it's more valuable it's it's more uh i would say it's a higher ranking quality time a video yeah. call right yeah. but there's no presence there's still no presence you're still so feeling that disconnection part yeah so if i can sit on my couch and you're sitting on your couch and we kind of have a room a space that's designed using our all of our rooms right like okay well if i sit here on my couch it'll put me here on that digital couch uh-huh. clint sits there and, and hunter sits there then when we sit here we're not piled on top of each other we're all next to each other in real life, where when I look Just left, like you're you looking at each other. That's right. weird. <laughs> and then we sit there and we watch a movie together. <laughs> yeah. Well, I would. You know what I mean? The idea. I needed that. Up. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That is completely different than anything we've really got our hands on so far. And I do think that that is. Forget all the extra cool stuff you could buy and blah 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 blah. If they get that presence together thing figured down, right? Mm-hmm. Where you really feel like you're hanging out with each other in the same room, and you kind of, you have that natural where you kind of forget, right? Mm -hmm. Well, that's what makes a really good game really good, right? Mm -hmm. When you kind of feel like you're in the game, not just playing the game. Well, if you can do that with this and you feel like we're really here together, um, especially just even like cards. What if we were just sitting at the table playing a card game like we do? Mm -hmm. We like to have game nights, right? right? That Being able to do that in real life, like and feel like you're there and feel like you're actually reaching for those cards before I reach for them. Uh Uh-huh. Completely, I mean, it's a game changer. There's nothing yeah. that we can even we can't even put our head around <clears throat> the impact that that's going to have, and the the growth that it'll bring. As soon as people actually start feeling that thing they're talking about, the amount of backing and more money and more you know ingenuity that's going to go into it, which may be happening on the background already, right? So these guys oh. probably have stuff developed, and they're oh, when they're sure. going to different investors and these other tech companies, they're getting to jump on and kind of get that feeling that we're talking about. And go, yeah. holy crap! Yeah. This is real. And, and Zuck- then this is Zuckerberg's happening. already hiring ten thousand people in Europe. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Network. I mean, like this is it's a like, guy. It's, it's happening. <laughs> we've we've talked about before how you know um, VR would get so much faster, further if people start buying it now. Uh-huh. And uh-huh. but with a company, a big dog like Facebook behind them, man, I mm-hmm. just think that there's not much stopping this. I think it'll. And I think. I mean, I mean obviously, think, you think still need. Like, people's interest in it but you you i just think they they've got a goal and they're gonna go for it so i mean looking yeah. back at the footprint it makes sense he bought oculus right mm-hmm. so he could get into this i mean this is what he wants to do mm-hmm. um i read an article where it said it was his personal like he wants to be the one that creates the metaverse so when mm-hmm. you have someone that's rich and powerful like that and they want to they had that personal need of like this is what i want to be known for mm-hmm. That's that's pretty pretty powerful when it comes to creating something like this. Now, I think the good thing <clears throat> I don't know how it's going to work because you have VR and you have augmented reality, mm-hmm. and the way they keep presenting this stuff is it's going to go both ways, mm-hmm. right? I don't know how they make a headset or a glass like a set of glasses type that could do both. Well, it's probably in not. The metaverse probably exists in more than one way. So you yeah. can do it. You so can you get your VR at home. You yeah. And you got your glasses for when you're out in the world. Right. And you can and, interact with both. And I think that, you know, uh, one of the things you had just said a minute ago, Hunter, was this whole 
it's Facebook. So of course they're going to know every step of where you're at in your house and everything around. And it's like, I do think there will be a, a decent push against that. There's going to be a good portion of people that are like, Hey, they've already got too much reach, right? Mm -hmm. Now we're going to give them oh, yeah. di digital 3d scans of everything we do. And we're going to walk in a metaverse. That's a digital world where they track us everywhere we go. And then, but then you're going to have to kind of come to terms with the fact that that's already happening. Right. It's not really any different, you know, and, and, and they no, already have your Google map. They know the layout of your exterior of your house for sure. I saw this video that was funny the other day. It said, um, anytime you, you know, get an app on your phone now, it says, C would you allow Facebook to track this app? <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. And um, it, the little thing pops up that says yes or ask it not to. And uh, it's, you know, it's, the wording on that is so weird. Ask it not to. So hmm. you push that, you know, and that they, they they were joking around back and forth like he was the app. And he oh, said, yeah. yeah, he said, ask it not to. And he said, so you're not tracking me, right? And he said, you asked me not to. And he goes, yeah, but you're not tracking me, right? And he says, you asked me not to. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's like, of course, they're probably tracking us, even though yeah. we, you know. And for some of that stuff, they may just, the simple fix to that may be they just say you can build your house, right? Like the Sim style where you can make yeah. a version. I mean, I, like Ryan said, oh, they've, yeah, already yeah. Got our, they've already got our location and everything, but, you know, it's yeah. not. The big problem is I don't really people... care about, I don't care that much in the modern age with how much they're already tracking us in the sense of um, if everybody knows everything, that's fine, Right. The problem is it's not everybody knows everything. It's a few people it's only, know everything. Yeah, right. only the companies. A few, right. right, a few big right. companies. I don't mind the transparency, some kind of humanity, uh, you know, move forward with our transparency. I think that could be good for humanity. But if you're talking about, it's like if you think about the internet, and we go back, you know, and there's jokes, Al Gore made the internet, blah, blah, blah. But who, who made the internet? Who's the owner of the internet, Right. Well, we don't really know in that, in that sense. We know different hands went into it, but it's almost like we all feel like the Internet just kind of exists organically. It's its own thing, like who made, you know, like <laughs> electricity. <really> weird. <laughs> who made electricity doesn't really matter. We all have it, right? At this point, it's just uh, a part of life. Right, and that's kind of the way we look at the Internet, even though somebody definitely did and is kind of somehow reaping the benefits that we don't really care. I'm sure people do know, and they're going to be like, okay, we know exactly what's going on here. But you all get what I'm saying. We're not sitting here mm -hmm. thinking, man, when I use the internet, Zuckerberg's getting rich. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. Like we do when we think of Facebook. But the way we're talking about this metaverse, it will be like using Facebook. Like the internet will be owned by Zuckerberg. You know what's weird, too, is the internet's only like, what, 30, a little over 30 years old, some, somewhere in it, maybe a little bit yeah. older. 90s. Came 90s, out in the, big rush. Yeah. yeah. I think it was created, what, in the early 80s? Yeah, yeah. But took off it wasn't until late, yeah, late 90s, 90s, even before like the huge explosion. Yeah. But then it's like, look how fast things took off, and now we're here talking about this metaverse. And I'm like, mm -hmm. am I going to be old, and I'm just living in a metaverse because being yeah. old sucks? I yep. can't get out of my wheelchair, and I'm peeing yeah. in a bag? Yep. Just send me to the metaverse. Yeah. Well, <laughs> you know, for the last yeah. days of my life. Next, Next thing, they're going to they're gonna, they're gonna tell you they can download you onto a hard drive. Mm -hmm. And then what do I say? I ain't doing that. No? No. See? See, there's two sides to that. There's the side that's the, the faith side that says they can't do that, right? Right. Like, they, they can't. That's, that's toying with God's abilities and the soul and all that stuff that can't be replicated, just like cloning and everything else, right? But then there's the other side of it that says, well, what if they can? Like, what if they do and you can't say they can't anymore because it's happening? Mm -hmm. Well, then do your terms change? Because then you go... Well, they do. So I can't sit here and say they can't anymore. I have to say they are. Mm -hmm. And then you have to reevaluate whether that's within the realm of what God was okay with anyways, right? Uh -huh. Or whatever uh -huh. your belief is, you have to reconcile that and go, it's happening. So I can't say it can't happen. So maybe I just misunderstood what it was that meant mm -hmm. life or whatever. And I'm sure a lot of faith-filled people will feel like, well, going to that would be like... um avoiding heaven forever so why would you do that you'd just be stuck in this digital form and never actually die well then you've got to ask yourself which part of you is dying and you go through all kinds of deep well at some point you would because those computers aren't going to exist forever 
Well, yeah, you know yeah, I'm but saying? you would feel like you're not. You're just prolonging yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. the the wait for, for me. You know, I am a faith believer, but to me, it just right. freaks me out too much. Like, I just don't want to be in a computer. <laughs> Yeah, that's just well, to me. That's like, what it's makes not really that different from everything else. Our consciousness yeah. is the one thing that they can't. Well, you've got to go deeper on what the, Hunter just said. What Hunter just said is a rabbit hole statement. I don't want to be trapped in a computer. You may be right now. I mean, there's no once you're there in another you world. Never know any that feels like a real world. It'll just feel like a real world, right? Just but, like the way but today. If I'm in a computer now, I didn't choose that unless I did, and it wiped me. But what I <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Now, you, find it, you find out later you you what, had that, you had downloaded yourself. I'm just yeah, I'm just saying <laughs> I wouldn't choose that now because it what freaks you, me out too much. What if you right. chose it in that digital world? Okay, what if you just got to test out the digital world and you saw this is way more like way more free than anything I'm living in here. Like there's no limitations. We could just the world's twenty times bigger. Money is an almost non-issue right you food is a non-issue you just kind of just do you just kind of be and have fun and do and whatever that money you want. translates to this world and then right? yeah and then all of a sudden you go to well does that feel trapped or does that feel free which one it's, becomes it's, the most it's not about what i'm feeling in the, it just it freaks me out too much i've watched too much black mirrors <laughs> <laughs> that's true that is it gets into that because yeah. you got to uh, go into like we're talking about a software yeah. And there could be flaws in the software. Oh, yeah, a virus, sure. and all of a sudden, and you're, the virus could take over, and then it's a nightmare. A, but One day a, you're living the the dream; it's like you know, heavenly yeah. there. And then the next minute, somebody uploaded your but, deepest fears, and it's a zombie. Yeah, but that could happen here. That I was, I, was about to, I was about to say, you have a flaw in your own software. And but I didn't choose it. You know, I'm just here. boom, heart attack. Yeah, that's that's bad hardware, bro. Heart I, no, I, get, I get what Hunter's saying. Hunter's saying if it happens there. I was the idiot that chose to go. Okay. If it happens okay. here, it just happens. Nothing I can do about it. Yeah, I get what you said. I got planted here. I get you. Right. right. So I want to make a real quick point before I forget, before we end the episode later. Because I'm still I'm in. talking. You know, I'm all the way in there. So earlier, oh, yeah. I was te- earlier I was telling Ryan this story, Hunter, because I didn't know you were going to be getting back on. Um, so earlier tonight, I decided, hey, I'm going to start getting back into some of this PSVR on my PlayStation just to kind of get back into vr and just kind of feeling that vibe because it's been long enough now that i you kind of forget until you're back in it um and especially since i'm thinking about getting the oculus quest 2 this christmas um i just kind of want to test it and be like is it worth it you know in my own brain hold on real quick do you know how the screen on the oculus quest 2 compares to the screen in your in your vr is it better uh, or re- reviews i've looked up they said the screen in oculus 2 is almost non-existent you can't you almost can't even tell it's there. Like, it's real, real, real minute. One of the best screens. Oh, okay. Is, yeah. So, so it's better. You're saying it looks yeah. better than... Okay. The biggest complaint on the Quest 2 that I've seen so far is the battery life of it. You okay. can get about, they say, about two to three hours, depending on how big the game is, if you're playing wirelessly. But you can connect to a power source. Oh, um, you're I think it's Type-C is, mm-hmm. the, is the hookup. And you can plug into a power source. You can also buy a backup battery. Plug on the back of the headset, which will give you more playtime. And mm-hmm. then also the other plus is you can uh, plug it into your computer and play like Steam, Steam VR and stuff. Well, I say you can there. take advantage of your computer's processing powers too, mm-hmm. so you can play upper level games when you're plugged into the computer. And it also has um, you can do mirror. You can uh, mirror your computer to your headset. Mm. As well, if you have internet that can um, do that. Um, anyway, so I was like, I'm going to jump into this world. And uh, so first up, I loaded up The Walking Dead Saints and Sinners. This game kind of was off my radar. I think we had maybe mentioned it at one point on the podcast. But because I wasn't playing VR, it just kind of slipped past me. Well, this month on uh, PlayStation, you get it for free as your mm-hmm. VR game. So I downloaded it, got on there. Um, I am excited to play this game. I didn't get to play much of it because it was too graphic for the kiddos. It'll be, Um, you mean you're playing it on your PlayStation VR? Yeah, Mm -hmm. yeah. And so what I loved about it was when you pick up items, items are usually in VR like you'll pick up a huge AR rifle and you just swing it around like it's nothing. looks like a paperweight type deal you know just nothing in this game they've designed your your hand motions to react to the weight of the item 
So you pick up a knife, you can move it quick. You pick up a two-handed axe, there's a little more of a, you know, mm -hmm. a heaviness so if, to it. What if, so what happens if you move quick? It just doesn't react? It just it, lags. It just yeah, well, it just doesn't move as fast. Your hands kind of move, mm -hmm. but it's like there's a weight to the the way your hands move. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Like your hands still try to move life. fast, but they kind of move slower as if you were really lifting it like a slow object. Right. Mm -hmm. So, so what Ryan's saying, though, off. like guess if you have your remotes and you just go like this really fast... In the game, it's going to be more like this. Yeah, it's still right. going to make you. Yeah, it's still going to make you do mm -hmm. that slow. It's going to drag. <laughs> right. No. Yeah. It, it almost does more of like a like you're like lifting it like this. Does that make sense? Yeah. Like so I'm saying that. after after playing so much, it makes you want to move with it. Yeah. 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 Yes. Or that. Yeah. You'll start kind of moving like mm -hmm. it like you can, which gives you a more immersive feel. I get so, what you're so I didn't make it out of the training deal because it was so graphic, but I did take my knife and stab a few zombies in the head because they have them like in buckets, you know. And I was just so impressed. Like, I stabbed the zombie, and the knife got stuck in the head. And so I had to, like, grab it and, like, yank it out of the zombie's head just uh, to keep going, mm -hmm. you know? So that was really cool, but Mikel was like, hey, it's too graphic. So already yeah. I'm like, dang, why haven't I been playing VR, right? So I was like, well, we'll get on Rec Room and we'll play that. <clears throat> so I told Claire, you know, we'll look, we'll look for something to play, because she was kind of sitting behind me telling me what to do and where to go. So we go into this art room that they made on Rec Room, and you could they had these big whiteboards. You could go up and you take these markers, and then you can go up and do like little drawings, right? Mm -hmm. And there was other people in the game, you know, walking around, floating around, and you can hear them talking and stuff. Um, anyway, so I go up to this whiteboard, and I'm trying to write, and it's not working. I'm like, what the heck, dude? Can't figure it out. So this guy that's standing next to me, and this is what makes VR so interesting, and I think kind of as, as Hunter and Ryan were saying earlier about us being able to come together in a room mm -hmm. and, like, hang out in a house and watch a movie, this is where VR excels to a level that you don't really notice when you're just watching a 2D video on YouTube, right? Right. Um, is the reaction. So this guy is standing next to me. I'm trying to round this board, and he turns around. Oh, sorry, bro. I already claimed this whiteboard. <laughs> He's like, you'll have to use another one. And but whenever he did it, he like turned, he looked at me. He's using his without thinking. He's using his hand motions like you would in real life. Oh man, I'm using this board here. You have to go over there, you know. Mm -hmm. And it's just this for a split second. I forgot that that's a guy. Like I don't know how to explain. It. Like that's not him. Yeah, it's uh, a guy that's who the yeah. He felt real. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's what so we're talking about. Yeah, we're just in this room hanging out. Just oh, oh, sorry, bro. You know. <laughs> Right. <laughs> and uh so yeah, I can see how this metaverse thing is gonna get pretty deep. Um anyway, so what's what's y'all's fantasies? If we're going if we're going full on in the next five to ten years, what's your fantasy what's for the metaverse? Fantasies? Yeah. Like you think of this, what what are you so pumped about that it's just like I don't know. Like you I know, would kinda kinda like I how you felt when you watched Ready Player One. Really, all of it sounds cool. I'd like to see cool digital worlds and feel like I'm jumping buildings and play me some some uh, crackdown or something like that. You know, where I'm oh, feeling God. like Here I'm a Hulk. I'm just saying those kind of things that aren't possible in the physical would be really fun, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. you feel like you're doing those kind of things, or I pick up a building or something, you know, cool, and then make it feel real. That's all cool. But what I think would really be mind blowing is much more photorealistic type stuff, mm -hmm. and maybe going like paragliding over mm -hmm. the tips of these giant pines. Mm -hmm. And flying through them and feeling much more real, not gamey. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I think those kind of things are going to be because then it's like, do you really have to go? Like, um, you know what I mean? Uh huh. Or, Which they're getting close know, to. I think there's the internet people, picks up. There's things people can't do because they just don't have the money to do it, right? right. They, mm -hmm. And they're not going to probably anytime soon. Uh, and to be able to go do those things and have them feel pretty real, right? Like, because like you're never go... even going to get close to real. So if you get that feeling of it feeling real, I think it's going to go a long way. It's like if I can go explore different places in the world and they feel real, it's a big thing to me. Here's where it gets really weird for me on some of that stuff that I think could be really cool is I'm in my VR headset at home that now will say the technology has caught up. It's mm -hmm. like you said, almost photorealistic. Mm -hmm. um, or maybe it's just a 3D video that you're actually watching and partaking in, right? Mm -hmm. um, just thinking about, okay, I want to go to France. You want to go to right. France, and Hunter wants to go to France tonight. Right. 
all right, let's go to France. We get in our VR headsets. We yeah. get our destination. Boom. We actually have hologrammed AR avatars mm-hmm. in France, in its physical space, walking and moving, and people who are wearing the AR glasses can interact with us. Mm-hmm. It's all there. Yeah, you're really there. I'm not just talking about in the mm-hmm. digital world. Yeah, mm-hmm. that'd be amazing. Yeah. yeah. And that's, yeah, that's pretty crazy to think people about be having, something like People that. be having, like, real girlfriends, for sure, over on the oh, other side of the sure. world. You'd have to learn French and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Or it could well, just, I guess it could just... France, uh, France would not be the first place I'd go to. You know, I'd go to Australia or I'd go somewhere. Yeah. Go well, it, it may get to the point where it could translate for you, obviously. True, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, for crazy. me, I don't think, like... I mean, eventually, like you said, I want to see the photorealism. Mm-hmm. But that's not like something that I'm super important to me in the next five years. Just seeing like uh, experiencing things together like would be cool, you know. Just playing games, you know, even being able to play multiplayer games so that it look good, um, and hanging out and doing like like you said scavenger hunts, mm-hmm. you know, that in these the open worlds or something together, mm-hmm. um, or think about like even like a uh, new world you know but as a vr game you know where you work, can work together to um you know i forgot what those are called uh those games that you like so much clinton MMOs. Like, yeah mmos yeah yeah um just stuff like that that you know like you can build your avatar and uh you know that person by their avatar basically and just it, it just a sounds... much more immersive gaming experience mm-hmm. yeah. exactly like Ready Player One is obviously super probably far away to be at that level, mm-hmm. but um, yeah. that is the dream. Eventually, it'd be super <laughs> cool <laughs> to be. be at that po- at that point. You got a little treadmill underneath you that you run mm-hmm. on and stuff. Yeah. Well, well, that actually is now real. Um, mm-hmm. yeah. For fourteen hundred dollars, you can get one of those types I've of seen treadmills. Those. Yeah, and they're they're accurate and working. So. Um, and they work with Steam VR and things like that. So the fact that that's already being offered for just that much money. Once that around, like they go any direction. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Yep. You hook on a, I just seen a guy the other day. He uh, got to go test one out. He said they're 14, about 1400. And he puts the belt on and puts the, there's types of these types of shoes that you wear. And they have little, um, it's almost like, uh, he said, like when you get on it, it's different than regular walking. You're actually like slipping, kind of, and yeah. so the bottoms of your shoes are slippery, and so you can base the thickness on like how good you are with it. And he said, like the better you get with it, the thinner you can get on the shoe, and kind of react a little more freely. And uh, he said, uh, he said, I just went for it, went pro level just to see what would happen. And it showed him like trying to run in Skyrim. And he just like falls and busts his butt. He's like just hanging from the belt because <laughs> he he couldn't do it right, but. Anyway, so I mean that stuff's there. They're starting to make the suits. I mean, mm-hmm. I don't know. It's getting crazy. It's pretty exciting. I want it to happen before I'm old, though. Like I think it'd be cool to have like a VR room. So you go in, you got your glasses mm-hmm. on, and when I'm in that room, I've got my little thing. Mm-hmm. But it's also got like wind or temperature changes that come in <laughs> different ways. Yeah, yeah. Like I go skydiving. <sighs> There's this thing just yeah. blowing on my face while I'm skydiving. You know how fun just that is? Just thinking like in your face mask, they could sell yeah. different fragrance yeah. that yeah. you just put yeah. oils in. Uh-huh. And then it just kind of puffs out different fragrances while you're playing the game. You know, like you're walking in the field and you can smell the flowers and oh, stuff. Oh, yeah. There's a lot they can do, I think. You know, oh, man. That we have not even touched on. Yeah. 4D. Or they just have software that can just replicate that somehow. I don't know. Um yeah, like, vid- visual effects that you don't realize are happening that are telling your brain to smell uh-huh. soda yeah. or bacon <laughs> or yeah, or they're just gonna have a cord that you plug into the back of your your brain brain and it's just gonna well, we didn't like- see it in this video, but if you watch the whole video, this is all about metaverse, and then just in the beginning intro stuff, um, he did Zuckerberg, he just sneaks it in and then never talks about it. He says you're gonna be doing this, you're gonna be doing this in the metaverse. And you'll even just be thinking things to make them happen. And then he just goes on. <laughs> like, like, no say, do. like, it didn't happen. Do, do, do. Yeah, just... yeah, that's definitely some, what else is that other than Neuralink, yeah. right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, Neuralink, yeah. 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 And so, oh, yeah, yeah. There's some things yeah. happening for sure. Because um, that's true. Because if it's tapped where you're sending signals to it, 
it could send signals to you to where like when you get hit from that side it kind of feels like you got hit you little bump. Mm-hmm. From that side yeah your yeah. nerves feel like it touches you oh, which would be just super creepy but oh especially a horror game shoe oh my gosh when it grabs you and you feel it just you know uh-huh. people, oh. people be dying in those games having heart attacks yeah, for, heart sure. Attack. Oh, for sure but what what that'd be awesome little training simulation though mm-hmm. you're going in to do something crazy but Oh, they'd probably start using that for soldiers and stuff, I'm sure. Heck yeah, yeah. But for sure. me, the ultimate would be, it would definitely be my friendship with my friends. Mm-hmm. Being able to invite family, like my, my brother-in-law or my cousins. Like, hey, come over tonight. I know you don't feel like coming over physically. Just pop in as a hologram and let's hang out. Well, it's just like all other technology has really done is close the gap. Yeah. Right? It changes communication. Like even what we're doing right now, you can go back. In the 90s. 30, 40 years ago, phones were barely, phones were barely used 30, 40 years ago. Yeah. You know what I mean? You're like, you're, we weren't even in no cell phones, right? Mm-hmm. You go back 60 years, it's over. So our whole form of communicating right now used to would have only been when we went over or letter, but letters were even a step up, right? Mm-hmm. And so when you think about that, like, what the heck did we used to do? You know what I mean? Like you get back mm-hmm. and it's like, you saw each other and once a year, maybe, I guess, and Mm-hmm. hoped you were at the same place when you thought you'd be there. And if they're not, it's probably because he died eight months ago. Yeah. Like that's how serious it was. And you didn't know that John <laughs> died until you went to go see him at your normal yearly meeting place and found out he was he dead. Show. <laughs> like how weird is that? Like we, mm-hmm. we can, and we're in this place with this, that this is so unbelievable from that. Here, that here's something we're going to go way past this. Here's something weird. Ryan's avatar hasn't moved in five months. He died. Yeah, right. <laughs> right. You know, like we have a funeral for his avatar yep. because he died. He's a non moving avatar. We, we we delete him from the metaverse. It's time to bury him, you know? Because he died. Send him off from like a Viking. Yeah. I mean, they already or, do it. They already or do you it. Have like a MMOs choice. and stuff. Listen, or you have a choice. AI you takes delete. over. You can delete. Yep. Or Facebook has been recording everything Ryan's done since he's been on. Mm-hmm. And we have a pretty good replica. Of Ryan's humor, of the way he plays, of the way he talks. Oh, I seen this. Po- hey, keep him alive for you. I seen this I'm podcaster. Listen to this. So this podcast guy that uh, now they make AI that will record your voice. You talk into it, and the more you record, the better it gets at mm-hmm. doing your voice, and mm-hmm. it can replicate your voice to the T. Yeah, yeah, I believe it. And so same kind of response. In, all you gotta kinda... do is type it in, and you will read the the text. That's weird. Uh-huh. Super it's weird. Like, but typing that in would be harder than yeah. just, just reading the text. Well, mm-hmm. if you're dead, though. Oh, yeah, I guess. Yeah. 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 Like, hey, Ryan died, but he's still in the podcast. Yep, yep. I'm Good telling time. you. Well, that's, I guarantee that's what's going to happen. Hey, do you want to keep Ryan alive, you know, digitally, even though he's gone? This will be a good, you know, commemoration. Then you'll have people say, that's super weird. Let him die. And then you'll have people go, oh, it's amazing. My old lady, you know, my husband My husband died 10 years ago. I still get to sit here each day and visit with him. Mm-hmm. It's just like him. It's, and just they just like, love it. it's just like seeing him bring back these old celebrities that have died. in movie, Like the Star Wars movie. They brought back yeah. together. The guy's been dead for a while. And they're just like, all right, let's bring him back for this because this is supposed to happen back in that, that time period. Right. So, I'll see, Did you all see Sean Connery passed away? No, I didn't. Oh, no, I didn't. I, I read something. I don't know if it, you know, sometimes people joke. About stuff, but I saw some earlier today. I think. Sean Connery, where the boobs just too big. <laughs> what I think would be cool is like if we we could get together, like you said, to record the podcast, but we could just do it all on there, and then mm-hmm. you, you know there may be a setting where you could set a camera in the multiverse, like yeah, in a location, well, I'm and on, just I'm... record all of our avatars right oh, there. Oh, I'm sure you can for making movies and all kinds uh-huh. of stuff. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, that'd uh, be sweet. I was thinking about, remember our little uh, winter event that we had with Sean and Justin and Rowdy and all them, where we just had a blast on Grand Theft Auto? You remember that? Mm-hmm. Think of that in VR. Mm-hmm. Think of yeah. all those memories going to the casino in the VR. Right. You know, think of how much we already I look think, at it as like great memories. Think of that I like think as brain, physical memories with us. That's what I'm saying. I think your brain, because already now, your brain kind of struggles with like, we know, like, we can go back and say, yeah, well, I know that didn't really happen. right? But yeah. when you're just kind of thinking about it, 
you do have memories where it's like, remember that time I popped up and just snapped that dude in like two, you know, and then I took two <laughs> steps, dropped down, shot that guy in the back. And it's like, yeah, I remember when you did that. No, you don't. It never happened. I never did that. Right. But it's in there like you did that. Imagine yeah, that, that, that being like VR, where it's that immersive. You're going to start having your brain not really exactly have a tie to which one was real and which one wasn't. Like they're both going to feel real. Well, they both weird. are. Well, I was that's about to say, to at that about. point, it mm-hmm. is really weird, real because once you throw in the treadmill and oh, yeah, you throw in the that. haptic suits that are going to start, yeah. you know, then it's like we're going to have real esports. You're out there right. playing Madden football. I mean, you're really, you know, jumping for the football and you're run, you know, you're juking and dodging and that'd be know. crazy. Like it's people, not you know, far you're, off. You're always, always going to have those people going, "Well, why? Why not just play real football or digital football? Like, why do you need a mix of the two? Mm-hmm. And it's because like, well, because I can go play in the freaking, you know, Dallas Stadium or whatever you're into. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's why I'll yeah. never be a pro, but right. I could I could go do this and play like a pro. Right. Um. And you can do it all the time. You can't play football for 12 hours straight. You know? Well, not really. If it takes all that physical, you can't play the digital either. I guess that's, that's true. That's true. Yeah. 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 It'll have its it it wouldn't yeah, still the guys be have faster feet and faster reactions, they would do better in the game, too. Yeah. 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 It still yeah. wouldn't be quite as physical as real football, but I know no. what you're saying. You'd still yeah. be like running on a treadmill. So, mm-hmm. yeah, you get your workout out of that. Yeah. Uh, that's how I would be, like that. Or body would be skinnier. Yeah. 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 So, in that way, it'd be good for society. Like, and Brian said. Yeah, uh, yeah, we, we wouldn't be as ugly. That's true. <laughs> I think too is just like being able to practice. Um, I think of like when I was in nursing school and the idea of in medical, your practice is you just go out and start doing it, right? Mm-hmm. It's not like you have it all down before you go in and talk to your first patient. You just go and you just start learning yeah, and you, doing. Hope you have enough down. Yeah, and it's like you get stuff like this. You could do full on simulations to where you know. Mm-hmm. what to do right mm-hmm. um i think that's a really good good thing for um even even like with ryan's job or um even your job hunter like think of the ar glasses you know ryan throws them on and in the metaverse it's already scanned what ryan uses he's already put into his metaverse account what kind of things he needs for pro light right and what products he's he's going to use he could literally throw on the ar glasses and we'll say that, you know, it can go ahead and line it up. He can just look at the house and without even figuring out how he's going to uh, tie everything together, it just do, 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 puts it all together. He's already got it mapped up. Boom. Mm-hmm. Makes a grid for his, for his workers. They throw on their AR glasses and they just go through in the physical lining mm-hmm. up what the, what the metaverse or, you know, what the AR told them to do. Mm-hmm. That's, that's pretty cool. You know, yeah, they can go back little, and look. little things like how does, that. How does this cord run? There it is. It's there. Yeah, it's there. I mean, we're already we're already pushing in that direction in the sense of we take pictures and a video of it, which is new, really. Like mm-hmm. t- even ten years ago, you weren't going to be on a job site and go, "Hmm, I wonder how I should route this," and then follow a video showing you. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I've got I've got guys doing a electrical job out in Tahlequah for me on a lighting job, and I hired them, and they said, "Hey, are you going to be able to meet out there with us?" I sent them a YouTube link of a walkthrough that I did. And they were like, freaking amazing. Yeah. It's got the, me- it's got the measurements on there. It's like, we were already there. We know we don't have to go to the job site until we're going to go start. Like yeah. nobody does that. Right. That, not, that's not to toot my horn because I just did it. Cause I couldn't meet up with them. So I was like, mm-hmm. well, what can we do? The fact that we can do that. Yeah. That utilization for, oh. for AR is going to be ridiculous. Yeah. yeah. Or like Hunter in the warehouse, Rod tells him, Hey, I need you to go get this product. Mm-hmm. It's out in the warehouse. It's over there in the back somewhere right? you'd put your glasses you, on you and it would just, just be highlighted yeah you just like search it boom it shows you exactly where it's at because it's tagged in the you know yeah because it's digital and physical right so right but even if you didn't have a exactly system, where it's at even if you didn't have a system locked in like that i could i could put them on right and go babe where the freak did you put that and she can see what i'm looking at mm-hmm. and maybe her hands in my screen right she's like it's right there ryan you idiot even though we're not here you know what I mean? She's like, it's right over there. Nope, look over there. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah, there it is. You know what I mean? And you grab it. Like, that's just some weird, like, simple, that you would just do probably without even thinking about it. Yeah. All right, babe, where's, where's that? You know what I mean? So I saw... Are you being, are you I, being crazy? It's right there on your desk. I just saw it through your eyes. You know? I saw this company was working on an AR thing for the metaverse where it would connect up at, like, grocery stores. So mm-hmm. say Hunter goes to the to the Walmart. He's got his AR glasses on. 
He's searching through, and then Natalie's like, oh, dang, I forgot this this item I wanted him to pick up. Instead mm-hmm. of sending him a text, she just sends him a link from the product on the Walmart app, right? Sends mm-hmm. it to, his, to him, pops up on his little glasses, he hits the button, it pulls up the item, you know, and she could, like, leave a message like, hey, I want you to pick this two of these up, right? And then, boom, it tags it in the store at the location that it's at. Hunter knows mm-hmm. exactly where it's like at. A little, I mean, like a little waypoint thing? Yeah. yeah, it's yeah, a yeah. Thing. A yeah. Little, little Hunter, <laughs> Hunter doesn't have car. to call and ask Natalie, hey, where's it at? Where do they keep yep. these? It just searches it up in the store, lets him know it's there. He goes well, over and picks it up, and he's done. It's funny that you say that because Walmart just in New York, they just finished launching their AI Walmart. Have you heard about that? Mm-mm. So this Walmart is like, I'm talking about like every foot across the roof, down each aisle. There's the railings where the cameras usually are. Mm-hmm. And there's a camera this far apart. Camera, 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 camera. So like the whole thing is digitally Scan recorded. Or whatever. Yeah. yeah, like 2.7 terabytes per minute wow. go through this. And then they have like a whole wall, like a, like a game company that's the server room that's running the AI that's processing what's going on in the whole store all the time. Wow. And it's processing like people's body language, like if they look like thieves, you know what I mean? And I it's, do, it's doing everything. So identify them quick if they try to take off. Yeah, if somebody needs help, you know what I mean? It's just automatic. It's wow. like there doesn't even need to be a person. Yeah, it's just super weird. <laughs> yep. That is weird. And if Walmart's going to put that much into it. That means you know, they've been talking to someone. Yeah, yep. they yep. know. They know more than yep. we do. Mm-hmm. I don't know, Hunter. You're looking kind of. Like dang! I was looking. There's a little dent in my floor right here. Oh well, don't tell me. My foot just went it. I was like, "What? No, it's not." You know, we got the one of those plastic things that your chair rolls on. Mm -hmm. It's got a big old dent in it. I thought you were putting your head down, like, "Oh man, what a no, no, no." What's going on in the world? Good. I mean, I'm not feeling the best tonight, but uh, information. Oh, Siri, listen to us, man. See, pull up a universe, bro. Is that because you said what's going on in the world? Mm-hmm. I want to go. Maybe. Oh yeah, that is true. Yeah. Hey Siri, tell me about the metaverse. I found this on the web. Oh, okay, that's all she's gonna give me. Gonna <laughs> Probably give me. just articles. Okay. What if Siri Siri will have her own? Oh, uh, she'll she'll become a person. Like we'll yeah, finally yeah, get to sure. meet her. She'll have it. She'll be like Jarvis or something, you know. But you'll be so, able to make Siri look however you want to. You know what right, I mean? It'll be, be something like that. Yeah. yeah. The next thing you know, you got Siri adult films. You know, because somebody will be somebody will be offended if you make Siri look a certain way. Well, then she's not fat enough, or her arms aren't long enough. Or hey, she's I, not dark. I wonder had blonde hair. Whatever. You gave her red hair. Yeah. Right. What's wrong with you? You got to represent this certain group. Everybody's represented. It's called hey, real life. Get over it. But the metaverse is about to change all that, dog. The metaverse, you be whatever you want to be. Mm-hmm. Right. That's that's definitely what I'm saying. Want, that's going to be a big thing. You, you want to be a lamp? Be a lamp. Yep. It'd be a little, My Little Pony people walking around and furries yeah. and yeah. all kinds of, kind of weird stuff. Yeah. I'm it's probably funny. I'm probably going to be like a I'm a, um a, a dwarf, you know, medieval dwarf. I'm gonna I'm gonna like I'm style gonna... my guy as the whitest dad, you know, like I'm gonna the New Balance is like on the, and the, the jean tube short. socks. Okay. Yeah, okay. the tube socks. Ryan, what are you gonna be? I wait. I already know. He's gonna be some grotesque alien looking thing with like a nasty huge head. And really small hands and weird looking feet. Why would he? He's got a huge head in real life. You think? Well, because he's, gonna... he's that. No, he's that way though. Like anytime we play like a fighting game where you could like edit the person back in the day, mm-hmm. it's like he'd give him like a huge dome, really weird looking arms, and yeah, all that. Well, I just wanted to push the limits of what I could create. But yeah, in here, if you can different. create anything, it's different. Yeah. 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 Oh, okay. So, so what would you? Be? I mean, the best thing that I could be just skinny me. I don't think there's a better that <laughs> better thing to be than that. <laughs> He'll just be ripped. Yeah. <laughs> he's de- he's got his affliction t shirt, you know. He's, yeah. It's just okay. I got you. I wouldn't wear an affliction t shirt. I'm not doing guys. Bag. You guys used to wear affliction? Is that no, what I just heard? That's what I'm saying. Uh, don't I, lie to me. I can see you. had the spiked, spiked faux hawks and affliction oh, he's, shirts. He's always at the spiked faux hawk, bro. Yeah. That's true. Spiked faux hawk. I like the style shirt. of the affliction shirts, but I've never owned any. There it is. <laughs> the truth comes out. Mm hmm. I don't know. Is there anything else y'all want to talk about right now? Metaverse related or otherwise? I don't think so. I mean, I'm just really excited for it. I mean, then. Yeah. I mean, I feel like there's more. I could talk all night about this and think about it all night. Yeah, but, but we're uh, about that time probably. It's been a good one. 
Yeah. I think if, if think of our listeners are still listening, then they're in it with us and they loved it. Yeah. You know, there'll be there'll be more things coming out. I'm sure <laughs> weekly, monthly. <laughs> there's a mute you. button, you know. I know. Yeah. I wanted to record it. He um, didn't have enough time to hit it. In the metaverse, there'll be a mute button. Just saying. So you know. I saw that come over him. Mm-hmm. It did. Anyway, if you guys enjoyed the episode, we'd love to hear from you. Also, in the comments below. Let us know what are you looking forward to with the with the metaverse. What do you want out of it? You know, and then like, subscribe, Patreon, yeah. all that good stuff. Do it if, all. If you want to set up a virtual funeral parlor in virtual reality, go for it. Of course, C- yeah. completely related to the things. NFT I just corpses. There you go. You know, boom. Make you you know a little corpse sculpture. Stay delirious. Stay dining. And stay. Meta gaming. <laughs> this has been a Delirious Dads production. For more information about the show, visit our website at www.deliriousdadsgaming.com. You can also find us on facebook.com slash deliriousdadsgaming, twitch.tv, and YouTube. Make sure you like and share our pages to help us grow the channel. You can listen to the podcast on iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, and Spotify. Please leave a rating and review if you enjoy the show. Thank you again for listening, and we hope to see you next time.